and Wanaisha Kizunga, who you all know, who is in charge of the mainstream media, and the team from my office. We were appointed on the 4th of October, and we have been taking time to settle down. And today is our first detailed engagement with you in order to brief you on certain issues that affect the Kenyan society from the point of view of government. So I'm going to read a statement and then thereafter I will call upon you to ask questions. Uh, when Aisha will guide us from that. And uh, we hope and believe that we are going to have a very good engagement. <laughs> First statement by Honorable Dr. Isaac Mora, government spokesperson. On the presidential foreign trips, national tree planting, and the cost of living uh, during uh, this media briefing. The Kenya foreign policy is anchored in a vision of peaceful, prosperous, and globally competitive Kenya and a mission to project, and the word there is project, promote and protect Kenya's interests and image globally through innovative diplomacy and contribute towards a just, peaceful, and equitable world. Our foreign aspirations as enshrined in the bottom-up economic transformation agenda plan, commonly known as the plan, is to make Kenya a respected and valued uh, partner abroad in playing a leading role in regional and Pan-African affairs to collaborate with international partners, to uphold commitments to the international community, and to expand Kenyan markets abroad. And please underline, expand Kenyan markets abroad. His Excellency the President is the nation's chief ambassador and chief executive officer. The conduct of foreign affairs is one of the executive powers expressly vested in him. To recapitulate, therefore, Kenya's foreign policy is the prerogative of His Excellency the President on behalf of the great people of Kenya. Since his assumption into office, President William Samoy Ruto has stepped up diplomatic outreaches with various countries with the aim of diversifying economic ties and deepening foreign relations. The President has made 39 foreign visits and we have hosted over 30 heads of states and governments. The last one being uh, the, the President of Romania, uh, who we had a reception yesterday. We have also been able to sign mega bilateral and multilateral agreements, further stamping Kenya's authority as a diplomatic power. So many Kenyans are asking, what are the benefits of these uh, foreign trips? The President's visits have yielded numerous benefits for our nations, emphasizing our commitment for fostering international relations that enhance our economic prosperity and global influence. These visits have secured investment partnerships and signing of agreements, some of which include, number one, over 350,000 jobs opportunities for Kenyans to work in Saudi Arabia and investment in renewable energy. Now you ask yourself, 350,000 jobs. Assuming you get a low skill job, that would pay a Kenya maybe 30,000 Kenya shillings. And you translate 
by 350,000 Kenyans, you can see the number of remittances, uh, the amount of remittances that would actually come uh, to us as a country. And currently, as you may be aware, we are actually able to get over 600 billion shillings. Actually, to be precise, is about 750 more than actually. If you go by the rate of the dollar, that is now coming from the Kenyans who are sending money from abroad. So if we have 350,000 Kenyans uh, you know, going to Saudi Arabia, you can see how many households, how many homes will not only be supported by their sons and daughters working in Saudi Arabia, but also the amount of money that will also circulate in our local economy. And, and, you, and you need to visit Kenyans who are, uh, families of Kenyans who are working abroad to see the, 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 the kind of you know, living standards that have been improved as a result of that. And it's also a, a foreign exchange and a uh, you for our country. Currently, the people who are in Saudi Arabia, by the last statistics, they are about 100,000. So if we increase with, by about 350,000 going forward, then you are talking about close to half a million Kenyans uh, helping us to actually grow our economy and also getting jobs that we discuss here at home. So it's really a great deal. Uh, the President has also held talks with UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak uh, and act a deal worth about 900 billion uh, Kenya shillings. Now well, that's quite something. And it should be uh, remembered that Rishi Sunak, the father actually, uh, was born and brought up here in Nairobi, uh, you know, he's a Kenyan of Asian origin. And it should not be lost that uh, the president actually visited, um, the first visit of the king was, was, was in this country. So if you have actually 900 billion shillings worth of investment here in the country, it is going to be a game changer. And the biggest project they have is, is the railway city uh, here in Nairobi that is going to re revolutionize our urban transport system. So very, very impressive. The President has also been able to uh, have uh, Kenya open its embassy in Senegal. Now what this means is that we have now a new engagement with Senegal. Yeah, uh, And that means it's a new market for our products. People can visit easily and Senegalese can also benefit uh, from us. One of the most popular things that the President has done actually is to invite you know, Kenya, uh, Africans to come here without visa. That, that will be made more concrete going forward and something that has become very popular uh, you know, in, uh, in Africa and you could see even countries like Rwanda are also taking uh, heed on the same. The other benefit that has, has also emanated from the uh, 39 foreign trips is that he has signed and ratified the East Africa One Area Network for mobile telephony with his Rwanda counterpart, President uh, Paul Kagame. What this means is that when you are going to call uh, Rwanda, it's going to be much, much cheaper. And that means there's a higher connectivity and also business uh, and, and communication for that matter. Then Kenya has also been able to establish the Kenya Djibouti Business Council because Djibouti relies quite a bit on our market and also we have to do quite a bit on that. Remember, Iga is there. So it's a very critical you know, outpost uh, in terms of our business and market uh, in, that, in that regard. The other issue is that uh, the President has been able to sign various MOUs in trade, investment, energy, ICT, transport, education, security, tourism, culture, agriculture, and the blue economy with the Congo Brazzaville counterpart, Denise Sasson West. Um, and, and one of the good things about it is that now there was a flight that was, was flying to Brazzaville, but it had stopped. Now it, is, it, is, it has resumed. And that means then we have more business opportunities. And uh, in further to that, uh, he has also opened a resident mission. So there's now a mission in Brazzaville. So we have now proper uh, you know, you know, diplomatic relations in that regard. The President has also been able to uh, sign another deal, a program 
the Millennium Challenge Corporation. And this again is going to enable us to have over 900 billion, actually. Uh, over, oh, sorry, over 9 billion, I, I beg your pardon. That will, will really help um, uh, in terms of getting electric vehicles. And you may ask yourself why this is important. If you change your vehicle from uh, diesel or petrol to elect uh, electric, you are going to spend only 10% of what you are spending earlier. So again, the cost of fuel and efficiency is very important, and this is for buses. Uh, so we can see how it's going to really uh, revolutionize this place. The president has also had, uh, you know, talks with the president of Ukraine, uh, Volodymyr Zelensky, and the whole idea is to have a green bulk or hub in Mombasa. You'll ask yourself why, because a lot of wheat is actually imported from this country, so it will actually help Kenya uh, to, to host the hub and therefore distribute to the rest of East Africa. And of course, it will cheapen uh, the costings because of uh, keeping a dollar. It is also very impressive that the United Nations Office for Project Services has actually picked Kenya as it is national military. So, over and above UNEP, UN Habitat, uh, such other agencies, we now have a new headquarter for a UN uh, agency, United Nations uh, uh, Office for Project Services. And that's a great deal because it means we are going now to get the, 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 the development dollars, we can call them that, and uh, they are going to actually increase. And also, over 129 billion Kenya shillings have been agreed upon by the Development Finance Corporation to fund Kenyan companies, uh, especially the SMEs uh, in, in agriculture and agribusiness. So again, a lot of money for private equity and private uh, you know, enterprise financing that artwork was not available before. And Kenya has also backed $75 million in terms of green investments, that's also a lot of money uh, that would help in terms of uh, climate action. And uh, the Chinese themselves have also signed an MOU, uh, President Xi Jinping, uh, so that uh, there is more market to their 1.4 billion people for our products. And of course, uh, they have also cancelled all the visa appointments for Kenyans as a result of that again. I think that's a very commendable issue because you don't need a visa to go uh, in China. That's, that, that's one of the greatest uh, new benefits that we've gotten from this. Um, and of course, the other uh, uh, MOUs are designed by the Chinese. Um, then there is also the Huawei deal between uh, ourselves uh, uh, and, and them so that we can have, you know, a transformation of our digital, uh, uh, you know, infrastructure. So they are going to be really helping us in doing so. And Pepsi has actually expressed interest uh, as a result of his visit, uh, for President's visit in America, in setting up, you know, operations in Nairobi. So Pepsi, of course, he made the right to of call. So you can see, ladies and gentlemen, we have had the benefits of almost close to two trillion uh, shillings that um, have been, uh, have been you know, sealed you know, in, in terms of MOUs. And you'll ask the question, then why, why can't the ambassadors do it? No, it's, it's, not, it's, not, um, it's, not, it's not that simple, ladies and gentlemen. You, you have to give uh, that trust as a president when he is committed uh, and when he shows up, uh, you know, the power of showing up, it's really very important. And it, it is important because Kenya does not have a lot of fiscal headroom, if you know what I'm talking about, because we borrowed a lot, so we need to find other ways, through PPPs, public public private partnerships, and all of such, so that then we are able to uh, leverage on, on, on new ways of financing our development. Uh, I think this is very, very, very important. For example, when you talk about the funding of renewable energy by Saudi Arabia, we have a potential of up to 26 uh, uh, gigawatts uh, through wind and solar. Uh, so we really have a lot of potential. That's why you can see uh, going forward uh, the Chinese, uh, the, 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 the Saudis would want to, to see how they can marketize this. 
Now let's come to the other issue of the National Tree Planting and Climate Action. Uh, it, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I really want to thank all Kenyans of all, of all, all walks of life who showed up uh, you know, on Monday, the 13th of November, to plant trees across uh, you know, the country. The executive office of the president was uh, you know, situated in Nairobi, led by the head of public service. The office of the government spokesperson is under the executive office of the president, and we are able to be in various stops in uh, Nairobi, and eventually we ended up at the Bombers of Kenya. And I was able to find a lot of people, including school-going children, uh, you know, who are doing a great job by you know, you know, investing into the future. So we must really commend Kenyans um, that they actually were able to do so. And it was also very impressive to see even the members of the opposition uh, or, or, or as me also joining. Because this is not, nothing to do with politics. It's basically a, a national endeavor. So that is really commendable and Kenyans really want to thank you for that as government. Now, Africa loses about 15% of its GDP growth to climate change. Last year, Kenya lost 2.5 million livestock to drought, resulting to an economic loss of more than Kenya shillings, 230 billion. You can imagine a family whose only uh, you know, wealth is livestock, is a cow, is a goat, is a sheep, is a camel. And now they lost all of that because of climate change. So people have become poorer because of climate change. And that's how it's affecting us. Livelihoods are being affected. Yeah? If you have someone you know, who is uh, you know, having a whole herd of maybe 100 cattle, and all of them die, uh, of course they are poorer than the way it was before. So climate, climate uh, change is real. The resultant effects of climate change, like floods, like we are the ones we are, we are witnessing right now, and drought have effects on school dropouts uh, because people cannot go to school. As you can see, some of them are going to school through the floods. Wildlife, uh, human wildlife conflict, agriculture, and other key uh, sectors of the economy. The Kenya Kwanzaa administration targets to plant 15 billion trees in a span of 10 years. That is to mean 1.5 billion trees uh, 